When customers first log on to your website, they are presented with categories along the top. Within them, you may have subcategories. When customers are clicking on to those particular subcategories, they are then presented with the web items within that. All this is set up within Dynamics Nav and is simply flushed through into the website. As you can see here in this particular category of wall plugs, it represents all these items. You can see down the side we have our attributes. These are great filters so that your customers can then say for the particular wall plug, I want plastic ones. This will dwindle the list down accordingly to those attributes in which they are selecting. Customers can view products by doing that, they're going into that particular item and seeing more of a description of that particular item. This could be used as a technical spec for certain items. They can add these items to basket. They can go back to the list, which will then take them to the previous screen there we were in. Again, the attribute remains and they could simply add the item to the basket at this point without physically going into the item. I'm going to show you an example of how the order process works. So we're going to take this item as an example and we're going to add it to the basket. I'm going to change the quantity to two just to show you how easy it is for those items to be added. You can see here you get a pop up. At this point, you can continue shopping. This will then take this item, put it into the basket, but then take you back to the previous screen, or you can proceed to checkout. Proceeding to checkout will then take you to the next stage. So you can see here, you've got your basket. These show your customers what they have put into the basket. There may already be items within there that they have previously put in. At this point, your customers can change quantities. They can update to say, OK, instead we want three, which will in turn change the cost, which will in turn change the VAT. They can remove items, so maybe an item was added in there accidentally. They can do that from within this screen. We're going to carry on proceeding the checkout process. At this point, because your customer has not signed into the website, it's going to ask them to do so. Doing this means that when they're processing the order, your customer is getting their ship to addresses. On signing in, it has then taken them through to the delivery aspect of it. So at this point, it's asking your customer where they want the goods to be delivered to. By logging it into the, uh, to the website, it has shown your customer their ship to addresses. Again, all this information comes from within Dynamics Nav as part of the setup you have done for that particular customer previously. Your customers will select their ship to addresses. As a one-off, they may want to add an address. This does not flush back through to Dynamics Nav. It's simply a one-off shipping address. It will then take you to the next stage, the shipping method how your customer is going to pay for delivery, whether it's standard or overnight. Again, this is all set up within Dynamics Nav. We click next once we've selected our shipping method. It then goes to payment method. This will be how your customer is going to pay for the goods. You will have a range of options, again, depending upon your setup within Dynamics Nav. Your customer will be asked to select a particular payment method and click next. At this point, your customer is now confirming the order. They will be asked to put in an external document number. This is the customer order number. They click confirm. And they will present it with a checkout complete reference on their page. This order has now been pushed through to Dynamics Nav as a pending inbound document order. It will be for you then to process that order as a normal sales order. 
customers can view what they have just ordered within the My Account portal. So this is the other half of our e-commerce edition. This is where customers can view their profiles, they can change their password should they decide to, they can view orders, invoices or statements. So we will click on the order aspect of it. In clicking into orders, it shows all their customer orders. This is linked back to the account in which they've signed into. It shows both nav orders as well as web orders. Your customers can view these orders. They can see what they ordered previously. Okay, They can reorder the goods from this screen. So it may be a big order that they don't want to go through the addition and add those items again to their basket so they can click the reorder button. It will take this order and put that back into the basket. From the basket your customers can then tweak and change as to quantities or add items or remove items accordingly. If we go back one they can also print the orders so should they need to see what details they ordered they're able to do that. If we go back one step slightly, we can go back to the My Account portal again. We've also got the posted invoices and credits in which the customer has created in the past. If we dial into here, we can see the invoices. Customers are able to pay invoices from within this screen. They're also able to query invoices. Querying an invoice will send out an email internally to yourselves so that you can then move quickly in contacting your customers to find out why they've queried that particular invoice. From within an invoice your customers are also able to create return orders. If we were to click on one, we can see that we can register a return order. What that will then do is it will take you to a return screen ask your customers to put in their quantity to return a particular reason code and then request a return order. That will then create a return order within your pending in inbound documents. Once within Dynamics Nav, in pending inbound documents, you will then process it, process it as a normal sales return order. We'll go back to the My Account portal once again and we will have a look at the account statements. Statements is one in particular in which your customers will call you a lot about. If you're not sending out monthly statements, it's customers chasing up on a particular statement or requesting a particular printout of a statement. You yourselves can now direct them to My Account and you can tell them that they can run the statements themselves. In clicking on Account Statement, that will then open up a PDF. The setup, the start date and end date is again set up within NAV in which you can change accordingly. If we open up, we can see the Account Statement on the screen just here. The final aspect of the My Account portal is the fast reorder entry screen. This allows your customers to create a specific list, essentially a wish list, in which they order goods from consistently. These items can be viewed within the fast reorder screen and can then simply be added to the basket. You can see here, if we were to add 20 of this particular item, It would then add to the basket and then can proceed to check out as if you were adding the item from the website. You can see here we've added 20 but again as we did previously we can update which would then update the cost. We can remove the items from the basket if we choose to not order those items anymore. On clicking on proceed checkout it will then go through the process in which we went through previously whereby which it will ask you for delivery shipment method, payment method and then simply confirming the order at the end of it. As previously, once the order is complete, it will then go through to Dynamics Nav and into Pending Inbound Documents, whereby which you can then process your customers' orders as a normal sales order within Nav. 
So our next video will show how our e-commerce solution links up with Microsoft Dynamics Nav to provide a seamless experience, automated process and real-time info.